Thank you. You can be seated. Well, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 13 and 14 say this. Brothers and sisters, we do not want you to be uninformed about those who sleep in death so that you do not grieve like the rest of mankind who have no hope. For we believe that Jesus died and rose again, and so we believe that God will bring with Jesus those who have fallen asleep in Him. I say this a lot of times at services like this. We don't always want to be here. Uh, we, we, we can find other places we would rather to be. We, we would much rather uh, be surrounded by uh, family and friends with a healthy, happy Jeanette in our lives. We, we would much rather be there. But we also know that um, this is a chance for us to confront the, the reality that our time on earth is momentary. And as we gather to comfort this family here, uh, we do so uh, in the midst of their grief, at their loss. Uh, but because Jeanette had accepted Christ as her Savior, we can celebrate. We can celebrate her healing, uh, that she is whole, and that she is with Jesus right now. We know that she was able to take hold of that uh, eternal life that, that Jesus promised to her. And so we are thankful that in the midst of loss, in the midst of grief, we can celebrate that Jeanette is with her Savior. Uh, I know the family has been comforted uh, by your presence and your prayers uh, in, the, in the past few days. Uh, I know uh, they will need that continued presence, continued prayers uh, in the days ahead. They thank you for your presence here to celebrate uh, Jeanette. So as we uh, begin our time together, we, we, I want to say this again. We celebrate Jeanette's life. We celebrate her commitment to her Savior, Jesus Christ. Uh, we celebrate that on Wednesday, April the 10th, Jeanette experienced that ultimate healing that can only come uh, in her Savior's presence. Uh, and most importantly and above all, we celebrate her Savior. We celebrate the Jesus that she served. We celebrate the Jesus that she placed her faith and trust in so many years ago. And we celebrate that He will give us, uh, through His life, death, and resurrection, hope, and eternal life. Let's pray. Father, we thank you that as we gather here, we, we grieve our loss. We grieve the loss of this family. But more importantly, Lord, we, we celebrate that Jesus has given us hope. We celebrate that Jesus has given us reason to believe in a, in a reunion at a future date, at a future time in heaven with Jeanette. Lord, we pray that this time together would bring healing uh, to this family and to the loss that they have experienced. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs> That saved a wretch like me I once was lost But now I'm found Was blind but now I see 
was grace that taught my heart to fear and grace my fears relieved how precious did that grace appear the hour i first believed through me toils and snares I have already come tis grace that brought me safe thus far and grace will lead When we've been there till thousand years, bright shining as the sun, we've no less days to sing God's praise than when we first begun. For our scripture passage this morning, I'd like to read from the New Testament. Uh, the first was Jesus' words to His disciples on the evening before He was crucified. And then the words of the Apostle John in Revelation 21, where we see a, a vision of the second coming of Christ. And together, uh, they give us a picture of Jeanette's present uh, and eternal home. Jesus says in John, Do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God. Believe also in me. My Father's house has many rooms. If that were not so... Would I have told you that I'm going there to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me so that you also may be where I am. And then in Revelation, John the Apostle writes, Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the, the first earth had passed away and there was no longer any sea. I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride, beautifully dressed for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Look, God's dwelling place is now among His people, and He will dwell with them. They will be His people, and God Himself will be with them and be their God. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death. No more mourning or crying or pain, for the old order of things has passed away. He who is seated on the throne said, Behold, I make everything new. May God bless the reading of His Word. Hello. Um, many of you knew my grandmother quite intimately. You shared many laughs, stories, and great times that will now be cherished as memories. I unfortunately was not able to grow up around my grandma. However, I was very fortunate enough to be able to talk to her regularly. We were able to share um, great milestones in my life from getting married to the birth of her great granddaughter. Over the past few days, I have heard many stories from my dad, my grandfather, 
and my aunt and uncle about the type of woman that she was. She was someone who had a very full heart, worked very hard to raise two incredible and beautiful children. But most of all, she had faith that was strong and solid. Our paths didn't cross often, but her sweet and warm smile and joy-filled laugh will always be something that I cherish and remember forever. The echoes of her compassion shine bright through her children. And the love that she shares with my grandfather is one that we don't hear about often. While we grieve her passing, we also should celebrate the beautiful soul that she was. She had a beautiful heart and she left a strong legacy that I can only hope to carry on. You're gonna have to bear with me. Um, I hadn't envisioned that I'd be giving a funeral speech for my mom. But as she would say, life has a funny way of throwing curveballs. And as you know, a few years ago, she had rotator cuff surgery, so um, that wasn't as easy for her. Um, bear with me as I get through this. It's going to probably get rough. In the midst of my sadness, I find comfort in Romans 8.38, and I'm convinced that nothing can ever separate us from God's love, neither death nor life neither angels nor demons, neither our fears for today nor our worries about tomorrow. Not even the powers of hell can separate us from God's love. Mom's love, her light, her spirit, their eternal cradled in the arms of God's unfailing love. Today, as we reminisce about my mom's life, I'm reminded about the countless adventures my sister Shannon and I shared with her. If our escapades were documented on a reality TV show, we'd given the Kardashians a run for their money. Um, even funerals had their unique twists, sometimes leading us to unexpected destinations like vacations. But through it all, amidst the tears, there was always laughter. Mom with her larger than life personality was a force to be reckoned with. She had a knack for planning, especially when it came to her own funeral arrangements. Trust me, I heard about it more times than I can count. Let's not forget her enthusiasm for showing off her future gravesite atop a, a conversation that often popped up from when the time my hair was more pepper than salt. Speaking of meticulous planning, mom overlooked one detail of her funeral arrangement the 11 a.m. timing, a far cry from her late night habits. She'd often call it 3 a.m. waking me up, my heart racing and racing on every word with anticipation of bad news she needed to be delivered. delivered. Are you awake, Sean? No, Mom, it's 3 a.m. I was just thinking of learning how I'd rebuild a transmission. Is everything OK? She'd always say yes and tell me a story that was on her mind at that time. I'm going to miss the three calls <laughs> to my sister, Shannon, and my brother-in-law, Casey. Thank you for your support and hospitality and love. Thank you, Patrick and Kelsey, for sticking by my side through the grief. I'd like to thank Ashley and Johnny and Ryan for making sure Shannon has the support she needs. To my dad. Thank you for the way you lovingly cared for mom for each of her 56 years you were together. You successively lived out God's command to love your wife as Christ loved the church. I'd also like to thank Bass Cawthorn Funeral Home and First Baptist Church of Rock Hill for helping us celebrate my mom's life. This is how I'd imagine she'd envisioned it. Finally, to each of you, thank you for carrying a bit of her with you so that we know any time we want to remember her, we just have to look at each other for a reminder of the impact she made on each of our lives. And to you, Mom, as we lay you to rest, know that 
your laughter, your love, and your spirit will forever echo in our hearts. And yes, you finally get the last laugh. I'm off to see your gravesite. I love you, Mom, and we'll miss you dearly. As you just heard, Jeanette planned a lot of the service today and all the music that we're doing <clears throat> are things that she wanted, some of her favorite songs. And one of those was at Calvary, that hymn. And I love the verse or the chorus that says, mercy there was great and grace was free. The grace offered by Jesus Christ, it's free. And then it goes on to say, pardon there was multiplied to me. There my burdened soul found liberty at Calvary. Let's stand and uh, join with me as we sing this hymn together. <clears throat> Yes, I spend in vanity and pride, caring not my Lord was crucified. Knowing not it was for me he died on Calvary. Mercy there was great and grace was free. Pardon there was multiplied to me. There my burdened soul found liberty at Calvary. By God's word at last my sin I learned. Then I trembled at the law I'd spurn. Till my guilty soul imploring turned to Calvary. Mercy there was great and grace was free. Pardon there was multiplied to me. There my burden soul found liberty at Calvary. Oh, the love that drew salvation's plan. Oh, the grace that brought it down to man. Oh, the mighty gulf that God did span at Calvary. Mercy there was great and grace was free. Pardon there was multiplied to me. There my burdened soul found liberty at Calvary. Well, most of my interactions with Jeanette over the past few years uh, took place uh, over the phone. She didn't call me at 3 a.m. I, I would not have answered more than likely if she'd called me at 3 a.m. Uh, sometimes I would call over to the house and Jeanette, Jeanette would answer and uh, we, we would have a conversation about how her health was. And there were uh, on a couple of com uh, those conversations about how she wanted her funeral done. Um, I would she would always ask me how things are going in my life and I would catch her up with what was going on in my life. And uh, then she'd uh, ask what was going on at the church and with her life group and everything else. And uh, and I would I would give her that information. Then sometimes I would call and Don would answer and we would have a conversation about Jeanette's health. And then I would catch him up on what was going on uh, in my life and at the church. And a lot of those times as I was talking to Don, I could hear Jeanette in the background. She was telling Don things that he needed to tell me. And so Don and I played a game of telephone with Jeanette for a little while. And then finally, Don, after a few minutes, he, he would go, I think Jeanette wants to talk to you. And he would hand the phone uh, over to, to Jeanette. Uh, I'll say this.
can find comfort and we can find hope uh, in the midst of, um, of, of all that we're going through, all that this family is going through. Uh, I'll say this, we've already seen a glimpse of Jeanette's in the words of Jesus. We know we're Jeanette with her. Uh, now we know her, we know she is healed and whole and a hundred percent. But I, I think it's important for us to, to, to find comfort and hope for ourselves during this time. And to do that, I want to look at um, Psalm 23. And Psalm 23 says, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for His name's sake. And yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for Thou art with me. Thy rod and Thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life, and I'll dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Best-selling author Dallas Willard has said this about the 23rd Psalm. He said, The Lord is my shepherd is written on many more tombstones than lives. And it's true that many people are familiar with that opening line of Psalm 23, but many fewer are uh, intimately familiar with the shepherd in their day-to-day lives. Jeanette, Lucy, was familiar with both. The 23rd Psalm is, is loved by all, but and many people think it was written uh, when David was a young man working in the fields, but it was probably more uh, likely that it was uh, written at the end of his life. So that as he reflected on his days as a shepherd boy, and in these beautiful memories, he speaks to us about the next step in the life of the journey of a child of God. Not only for our past, not only for our present, not only for our future, David remind us, reminds us that we have a good shepherd who is going to take us to our eternal home when we leave this place called earth. And first in this passage, and specifically in verse 6, we're assured of God's promise. I, I, I love how it starts out. Verse 6 starts out, Surely, David says, surely. It's a, a statement of faith. It's a, a statement of David's assurance in his shepherd. And he has the certainty, which means everything when the difficulties of life surface, when the job ends, when the disappointment arrives, when we look in the mirror and realize that our bodies are bending south, when, like the Apostle Paul says, we are harassed at every turn, conflicts on the outside, fears within, as we face the loss of someone that we love, more than ever, we need God's surely. And this is much I know. Throughout her life, Jeanette could say surely. She talked about her faith with me. She talked about how much she uh, depended on her Savior. And as she reflected on her situation, her condition, her needs, she knew that there was a God who was saying to her, Surely. Found out she came to know Christ at a young age when she lived up in Maine, and she knew that she had a God who was not a question mark in her life. But because of that, surely, in verse 6, she has a God who is an exclamation mark, who is with her every step of her journey. And He has assured us that He's with us, just like He was with Jeanette through each valley that we go through, around every bend and every road, and across every step that we take, He is with us. In the midst of the tribulations and troubles that we will come, that will come to us in this life, our shepherd promises He will walk with us. And in that trip that we're going on, we are accompanied by God's pilots. Surely, goodness and mercy will follow me. And what is God's goodness? Well, it's the, the sum total of all His attributes. It, it's His character. It's the very nature of who God is. Psalm 145 verse 9 says, The Lord is good to all. 
And we know that he was good to Jeanette in this life. And, and what is God's mercy? Well, God's mercy just means it's his loving kindness, his tender affection. In the ancient world, it was a love that, that flowed deep with emotion. Even to those who were dishonorable and unworthy, God's mercy flows to all of us. And those two pilots of life, goodness and mercy, do an amazing thing. They follow us throughout this life. Doggedly, tirelessly, relentlessly, they pursue us and give us hope that God is with us. They never sleep, just like our God. They never fail. They never prove inadequate. They are part of God's provision for each one of us, a loving God who is determined to give personal, individual help at every moment in life. And then we know that we have God's presence all the days of our lives. Ken Taylor, who is known for his paraphrased version of the Bible, the Living Bible, uh, was asked to write an autobiography in his life. And he hesitated for a while, but he finally consented. And in the prologue, he writes this. Within these pages is the story of an ordinary life with some extraordinary events scattered through it. I fear it is not the exciting read that some autobiographies are, though I have experienced some dramatic highlights that I'll tell you about. It is the story of God's quiet leading, sometimes into exciting events, but more often in day-to-day -day living. Many years ago, when I left the work I love so much at Moody Bible Institute, leaving job security to work full-time translating the Living Bible, I knew I was taking some risk with the welfare of my family. And I recall remarking with deep feeling to my oldest son, I'm not sure where I'm going, but I know it will be a guided tour. And of course, he says, I meant guided by God. And it has been just as I believed. I think if Jeanette could look back on her life and talk to you, she would say, listen, my life wasn't the most exciting life. But God was with me through every day-to-day -day encounter, and He guided every step of the way. And lastly, we have an abiding place. Uh, listen, the, the, the last part of that verse says, I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I'll dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I, we, we, we cannot even begin to comprehend how long forever He is. But here's what we do know. We are never fully at home on this earth for those of us who know Christ. Everything on this earth, everything is temporary here. I love what C.S. Lewis says he, as he writes about his conversion experience. He talks about coming to know Christ, and he says, I have come home at last. This is my real country. I belong here. This is the land I've been looking for, though I never knew it until now. Jeanette knew at a young age this was the land she was looking for. It, it wasn't a home in Rock Hill. It wasn't on an island in Maine. The real land she was looking for was an eternal home established by that personal relationship with her, uh, her, her Savior, Jesus Christ. And, and that's the hope that we hold on to, that we have a Savior who gives us eternal life and, and, and has a home prepared for us. Now, I want you to think about this. As I, as I was reading through some stuff, uh, getting ready for this, I, I came across the story of the Taj Mahal. I don't I, probably if I say Taj Mahal, you have a picture in your head, and and, and I've never been there, never visited, seen pictures of it. But uh, here, here's as I as I was reading about it, what I found out it was built almost 400 years ago by a guy named Shah Johar for his wife. It's constructed out of white marble. It it glistens like a jewel on the banks of a river. It's, it's beautiful, it's complex, covers 35,000 square feet, and is ornately decorated with precious jewels. It's been declared one of the new wonders of the modern world. But here's the thing. The Taj Mahal was not de designed as a palace for him. It wasn't designed as a, as a summer residence. The Taj Mahal is a, is a tomb. It, it was built by the lavishly romantic and wealthy Shah for his wife, to whom he'd been married for 14 years before she died. 
And I, I love as Anne Grand Lotz reflects on this, she says, if one Indian ruler could prepare something as breathtakingly beautiful as the Taj Mahal as a tomb for his wife of 14 years, what must God be preparing as a home where he will live forever and ever and ever with his people whom he loves? Jeanette is home. She's in the presence of her Savior today. We know that there is no weeping for her. We know that she stands in her eternal home, blessed with eternal life. And we can have, we can have joy as we try to, to think about where she is now. And we, we, we can celebrate the, the life of Jeanette Lucy, because we know this. When she entered into the presence of her Lord and Savior last week, she heard these words, well done good and faithful servant. I did want to share briefly just this one quick story about Miss Jeanette. Um, I didn't really know her personally. I, I sing a lot at, at church now, and one day I got this phone call, just out of the blue phone call, and the lady introduced herself, and she told me that she went to First Baptist, and she really wanted me to sing her funeral. That really, there were a couple people she was considering, but that I won. <laughs> and so, and so, but she said, but don't get me wrong now, I'm not old and I'm not sick. So this could be a long time in the future. How old are you? That's what she asked me, because she was hedging her bets. She wanted to make sure the probability was still, you know, strong that I would be here for this. So it kind of it tickles me to hear that that's kind of how she lived everything. She was a planner. So um, she picked out songs and she called me back a week later and changed her mind. And then she called me back a few days after that and changed her mind. That went on a little bit. But anyway, um, when I first heard from Reverend White that she had passed, um, I was like, I got this. I can tell you exactly what the order of service is. So. Anyway, this is the other song that she really wanted me to do today. It's called God Be With You Till We Meet Again. God be with you till we meet again. By his counsel's guide uphold you. With his sheep securely fold you, God be with you till we meet again, till we meet, till we meet, till we meet at Jesus' feet. Till we meet, till we meet, God be with you till we meet again. God be with you till we meet again, neath his wings securely Daily manna still provide you. God be with you till we meet again. God be with you till we meet again. When life's perils thick confound you. Put his arms unfailing round you. God be with you till we meet again. Till we meet. Till we meet. Till we meet at Jesus' feet. Till we meet, till we meet, God be with you till we meet again.
This time I'll ask everyone except for the family to please stand as we close in prayer. Lord Jesus, you gave Jeanette eternal life a long time ago on a small island in Maine where she met her Savior. She lived faithfully throughout her years and we celebrate the life that she lived, the lives that she impacted. Lord, we thank you that you blessed her presence with us in the past years. Lord, may you continue to comfort this family and give them your presence in their lives in the days ahead. Surround them with people who will be there to encourage them and love them. Lord, as we leave this place, may the memory of Jeanette, the life that she lived, and the promise of eternal life through our Savior compel us to live in a way that when we get to heaven, we'll be met with the same words, well done, good and faithful servant. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.